toe. Ja, ja. ja het, is, het is groepspsychologisch. Ja, ik weet het. Het is ressentiment, het is uh, je m'en fout. Dus, ja. uh, ja. Dat is zo pijnlijk. En stel je voor in, in de US ja, ja, terug. Het is gevaarlijk, het is heel gevaarlijk. Het is gevaarlijk. Ja, absoluut, uh, ja. Je moet er wel doorspartelen. De school is in Gibson, de gymnasium ligt daar hinten, dat hebben we meer gezegd. Ah, oké, okay, oké. Okay. Ja, dat is schön hier. Also. Ik hoor het in de nog van. Ja, dat is haar schoon.
quantity of beer um, with InBev near, near us here. But these days, Leuven is also declared the city of organs. Because at this moment, Leuven is hosting a symposium on sound heritage, and more specifically about a Renaissance organ project around the 16th century Jean Crinon organ in the St. Peter's Church. So this symposium is organized by ECHO, which stands for European Cities of Historical Organs. It is a three-day event with various cultural activities, including concerts, a symposium in the Romaan support, and this lunch debate in Holland College. The speaker is Elias Praxmerer, and he will be asking the question, organs, sounds in a modern city, an, an uh, anachronism. Elias Praxmerer is an Austrian organist, pianist, and composer. His interests range from the earlier repertoire of the music of high romanticism. He performs regularly as a soloist and chamber music partner in Austria and abroad, including on historic organs in Germany, France, Italy, Belgium, and the Netherlands, Switzerland, and Czech Republic. In the interview, the respondent is Geert van Istendaal. Geert van Istendaal is a prose writer, poet, essayist, publicist, and translator. Formerly, he was a journalist and news reader, but he is also an organ enthusiast. We are delighted to have him here, but first I would like to give the floor to Elias Praxma. <coughs> yeah, thank you for the introduction. I would like to welcome everybody, dear colleagues, dear friends of organ music. Uh, to begin with, bon appétit. <laughs> and hopefully we can discuss this uh, thrilling question Luke uh, asked us to uh, talk about organ sounds in a modern city. To begin with, I want to show you a little bit of an overview. Um, just try, yeah, perfect. In today's society, historic organs are placed in different locations, maybe in churches, in museums, in universities. This situation has a huge impact uh, on treatment of historic instruments. Are there people looking after the organs? Are there experts, maybe students in universities? And it also has a huge impact about the awareness of the historic organs. The possible uses depend on that occasion. For instance, you can play the historic organs in services, uh, during concerts, in master classes, in universities. And uh, also maybe some organs are just a part of a piece of furniture which aren't used at all. This situation is, uh, is often given. However, to begin with, generally speaking, I believe that we are living in a modern age, in a digital age. And like in every social and global trend, in my opinion, is, it is very important and is essential to have uh, an um, opposite pole like in politics, there cannot be a, a true global trend. There isn't a trend with, uh, without any disadvantages. And if something will fail, like for instance, a computer program in a modern electronic organ, you can find uh, possible solutions by looking at older organs, like uh, there, there was a uh, the development of pneumatic organs or kegelladen organs and to, to, to develop the solutions uh, which resulted in errors out of these systems, you can found um, proper ways to deal with in older organs, in mechanical ones. Now let us look at another aspect. Historic organs um, have not the same status in different societies. Certain people say historic organs should be valued. Other people will tell you old instruments are nothing more than an underdevelopment status of a modern instrument. But of course, I'm speaking uh, of general public, not professionals. There is an, a really another situation. When we come to the last point, uh, universal instruments there is one main aspect in the colorful world of modern instruments 
uh, somehow it turned out that, for instance, modern pianos are quite universal. For instance, if I play on a Steinway in Vienna, I could be sure that the Steinway, the same model in New York, will quite sound the same. But fortunately, organs aren't universal. And also this aspect leads us to the conclusion historic organs are very important in our organ world. Two other aspects, one for composers for historic organs. Composers find many, many beautiful things in historic instruments um, in the terms of writing for organ music. I think Bernard would uh, be the core with me uh, when we say it's uh, very thrilling to write for historic uh, temperature or tuning or to have a historic list of stops for organs. You can find very, very interesting ways of writing music. Also maybe the kind, uh, the special ways the keyboards are built. I, I think I don't have to mention the importance, the tremendous importance for performers, for historic instruments in modern societies. When we play on a historic organ, it's uh, somehow like a time travel machine. When we play the original music on this instrument, we were uh, playing the music like 200 years ago or 300 years ago. And I will show you two proper examples where historic organs are included in modern uh, situations. The examples are chosen from uh, Austria, from Tyrol. The first one is the Court Church, the Hofkirche in Innsbruck. Some uh, will, will know this organ. It's one of the most uh, beautiful ones, one of the most oldest, oldest playable organs in the world. It's the Ebert organ built at the middle of the 16th century. And the special occasion is that the organ is still used in services. And this only uh, happens because people are aware of the situation. Uh, people were told there is a very, very important organ and there is one service per week where the historic organ is used on a Sunday evening. And people just come to listen to this instrument and to the sound of this one because during the service in the proprium, the music will be played on this instrument without singing because of course uh, today's structure of uh, services is not very suitable for this mean toned uh, tuned organ. So you have to be very carefully to use this in services today and masses. But if you are very sensitive, uh, you, can, you can find your way. And the, the organ only survived because there's also another organ in the church which uh, has been built this is the, the list of stops for the Ebert organ, just to have a quick look. Um, I will come back to it. Just because there is another organ at the back, which has been built at around uh, 1900, the, um, and it has been built in a kind of time where it was very modern to change the historic organs. And the Ebert organ wasn't playable at the time where the other organ uh, was built. And this solution saved the Ebert organ because they decided to build a new one instead of changing the historic one. And now we have the situation, we have a modern one in the church and also an old one. During the regular services and also concerts, mainly this one is used, but on a very special occasion, like I told you on Sunday evening,